Susan Smith McKinney Stewart, black physician, born 1847, died 1918. Susan McKinney Stewart was the first black female doctor in the state of New York, and only the third in the U.S. She had a successful she had a successful private practice in New York City, in Brooklyn and Manhattan, and was regarded as especially knowledgeable about curing the effects of malnutrition in children. Stewart was one of the founders of the Women's Hospital and Dispensary in Brooklyn. She was also active in the community, participating in the temperance, suffrage, and civil rights movements. Stewart was born in 1847 to Sylvanus and Analyza Springsteel Smith, activists who lived among the black elite in Brooklyn, New York. Her father was a prosperous hog farmer in then rural Brooklyn. As a young person, Stewart studied the organ with two of the most prestigious teachers in Brooklyn, John Zundell and Henry E.R. Brown. Stewart retained this interest throughout her life, and while she lived in Brooklyn, lived in Brooklyn, she played in churches. Before becoming a doctor, Stewart taught music in the District of Columbia's public schools for two years. Stewart received her medical education at the New York Medical College and Hospital for Women. The reasons for her career choice are unclear, perhaps related to the deaths of two of her brothers in 1866 from cholera but it was unusual for a woman at that time. Indeed, women who aspired to be doctors were basically restricted to the study of homeopathic medicine, which is what Stewart was educated in at her medical school. She proudly paid for her own education, though her father could have provided the funding for her. After three, three years of dogged study, Stewart graduated in 1870 and was valedictorian of her class. After graduation, Stewart married the Reverend William G. McKinney, an itinerant preacher. They eventually had two children together, a daughter, Anna, and a son, William S. It took several years for Stewart's career to flourish. When it did, her private practice attracted people of, race, of all races, ages, and incomes. In 1881, Stewart was a founder of the Women's Hospital and Dispensary in Brooklyn, where she served as a staff member until 1896. The institution later became known as Memorial Hospital for Women and Children. In 1882, she became associated with the Brooklyn Home for Aged Colored People, where she was a manager and on the attending medical staff. She served on the Home's Board of Directors from 1892 to 1895. In 1882, uh, Stewart also became a staff member at the New York Medical College and Hospital for Women, her alma mater. Stewart retained several memberships in professional associations, including the Kings County Homeopathic Society and the New York State Medical Society. She presented a paper before the former in 1883. It was a case study of one of her patients, a woman exposed to carbolic acid during pregnancy, resulting in her death and that of her baby. Three years later, Stewart delivered a paper related to her speciality, childhood diseases, especially related to malnutrition. Her specialty, childhood diseases, especially related to malnutrition. While her career prospered, Stewart remained active in social causes, she and her sister Sarah were important members of the Equal Suffrage League. Stewart herself was one of the founders of the New York Women's Loyal Union. She was active in the temperance movement and served as president of a local chapter of the Women's Christian Temperance Union. Stewart attended the Bridge Street AME Church and participated in its missionary activities. Stewart also maintained her organ, maintained her organ playing and was active in the Brooklyn Literary Union. From 1887 to 1888, Stewart took a year of postgraduate courses at Long Island Medical College, where she was the only woman in the school. Two years later, in 1890, Stewart's husband fell ill with a cerebral hemorrhage. He was disabled for the rest of his life and died on November 25, 1895. 
1896, Stewart remarried to the Reverend Theophilus Gyald Stewart, who worked as a chaplain, chaplain, chaplain in the United States Army and as a writer. Upon their marriage, Stewart left Brooklyn to move with her new husband to Fort Missoula, Montana, where she was sta- where he was stationed. Stewart became licensed to practice medicine there. Two, year- two years later, Stewart moved to Ohio to become the college doctor and instructor at Wilberforce University. She remained there until 1902, when her husband returned from his assignments as chaplain in Cuba and the Philippines. Then Stewart and her husband moved to his post in Fort Neobrara, Nebraska. In, the, in Nebraska, Stewart also became licensed to practice medicine and was associated with a chapter of the Women's Christian Temperance Movement. After a brief stint in Fort McIntosh, Texas, the couple returned to Wilberforce in 1906 after Stewart's husband retired from the Army. There, Stewart resumed her, formal, her former duties while her husband became a faculty member in the D- Department of History. Stewart remained active in both her professional and social interests. In 1911, she and her husband went to Europe, where she delivered a paper titled Colored Women in America to be first to the first interracial conference in London. Stewart delivered a paper titled Women in Medicine to the Colored Women's Club in Wilberforce. This paper was reproduced in pamphlet form and circulated widely, perhaps because perhaps because it was one of the most complete studies of black women and their contributions to medicine. Stewart also served with the Red Cross at the beginning of World War I. Stewart died suddenly at Wilberforce on March 7, 1918. Her body was transferred back to Brooklyn for burial, where W.E.B. Du Bois gave the eulogy. After her death, Stewart was twice honored. Black female doctors in New York, Connecticut, and New Jersey named their society after her. In 1975, Stewart's grandson lobbied to have his grandmother honored by renaming a junior high school in Brooklyn for her, and it became known as the Susan Smith McKinney Junior High. Citations are in the description.